Hi, I'm Stefan, the BMW DIY guy, and do you want to dramatically reduce road noise and improve your stereo system in your car? I'll show you how. All right, y'all, so let's talk through this project a little bit and the reasons why you would want to do this yourself. Now, keep in mind, this is my stage two video for sound skins. I have a stage one and a stage three. Now, they can all be done independently of each other, and really, the stages are more to have to do with complexity of the install than anything else. Now, reducing road noise is a really big deal, especially if you commute a lot or drive a lot. That background noise of your tires and other cars and the like can really be fatiguing in the long run. In addition, if you've done stereo upgrades or something similar in your car and you really want to improve that kind of that base sound floor for your car, cutting down on that road noise makes a tremendous difference in your car. And suddenly your existing system, OEM or upgrade, sounds much, much better. Now, this isn't very hard. Now, make sure to check out my stage one video where we lined the inside of the door cards with the new SoundSkins Wavy Foam. Now, stage two, what we're going to be doing today is replacing the vapor barriers in the door. And I'll show you what the, that is exactly when we get into it. But we're actually going to do two different layers. We're going to be using SoundSkins Classic on the inside of the metal skin of your door. So the outside skin of your door, we're going to be lining the inside of that. And then we're going to be replacing the kind of foam OEM vapor barriers with SoundSkins Pro. And this is going to set up a double baffle in your door. So all of that noise that comes in through the metal of your door will actually be cut down dramatically. Now, it's not all that hard. It's really just time consuming and I'm going to walk you through the whole process. So one of the very first things you're going to want to do is take your door card off. So let's jump over and start there. All right. So when I go through this and now these instructions are really could be pretty much agnostic depending on your car. I'm gonna be using the same X1 that I, that I did the stage one in, so that wavy foam in the door cards themselves. So I'm gonna walk you through taking the, the driver's side door card off, the rear door card off, and then you're just gonna duplicate that on both sides. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. But if you haven't done this before, I just wanna make sure to give some pointers on this. Cause like I said, this, this stage two can be done independently of all, of all the others. Now on this particular X1, you're gonna to wanna to take your door trim off. There's a little gap here at the bottom. You take a plastic trim tool, get in underneath, get it, start gapping, carefully pull it away. Keep in mind, sometimes you'll lose, uh, these little metal clips will be left behind. In this case, a couple of them were. So you can take them off and put them back on these little tabs here on the trim uh, when you go to put the door back together. Now, this has four T20 screws, one here at the top of the handle, one here at the bottom of the handle, and two here you can feel underneath when you look, kind of driven in at about a 45 degree angle. So go ahead and take all four of those out. I've got three of the four out now. And then once you're done with that, you're gonna wanna again, take a plastic trim tool and get underneath the edge here. I usually start down low and we'll get underneath the low and start to pull this away. If you've never pulled your door card, um, it can be a little interesting because <laughs> it'll make a popping sound. You get the plastic trim tool in, it'll make a pop as those plastic kind of expanding rivets will pull out and then just work your way across the bottom, pull, 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 pull until the whole thing comes loose. Once the whole thing is loose and you can pull it kind of up and away um, from the top of the frame, be very careful because you still have your Bowden cable, which is your door pull right here, still connected. You're gonna reach back behind and pull that clip off, but then your wiring harness is still gonna be connected as well. I'll show that once this is loose, um, but I wanted to walk you through that whole process. Okay, so go, go ahead, one, two, three, four, take those screws out, pop and loosen up your door card, and then I'll show you taking it off. All right, so here's the back of the tour card. This is your Bowden cable. You just reach around and unhook this. Now, depending on your model of car, you may not have this much leeway in the cable. There's a fair amount in this case. Once you lift it off the locking pin, you actually have a fair amount of cable to work with, which is nice. So just pull up and out on the Bowden cable to get set that aside. And then you'll see your wiring harness over here on this side where it connects all into your lighting and your uh, door controls. So just press the little clip, pull this plug off. You're going to do the same over here on the other side. Now keep in mind, I've got the wavy foam in here from the first install. So if yours looks a little bit different, if you haven't done that, that's why. But just come in through here, carefully unplug everything, especially the fiber optics. Those t that plug tends to be a little touchy. But you can go through all of this, get all your plugs undone, and then go ahead and carefully set your door card aside. All right, so we talk about your foam vapor barrier, and only until the most some of the most recent models for BMW 2021, I think, and, and newer, 
they've started to replace this foam vapor barrier with a hard plastic shield. So this is uh, for the cars that actually have this foam squishy vapor barrier. Now, here's what you, really quickly, we're gonna do the full stage too, but just to point it out, if you really wanted to and you didn't wanna do the inner lining, which is what we're going to do, which is gonna require taking the vapor barrier off, you could just put a layer of SoundSkins Pro directly right over the top of the existing vapor barrier. It would lay in, um, and you just you just cut a piece, so just measure, so length and width to get a, to, to get a, a rough cut piece, and then take a pencil and, and mark, you know, lay the sheet up here and just mark some of the cutouts. Now, you're gonna want to extend beyond the, the existing vapor barrier. See how it's open here? Obviously, this is the, the hole for our, our grip screw right there, so we're not gonna wanna cover that. But the rest can extend out further. So you can see the bottom right here, you can extend out a little bit further. You can extend out a little bit further across the bottom to fill in some of the space. Now, well, I am gonna cut the vapor barrier off. <clears throat> But if you didn't want to, you could just lay in one layer of sound skin and, and not touch your vapor barrier, and it would make a big difference. But uh, since I want to do line the inside of the doors as well, we're going to take this off. Now, you could just really just just muscle this straight off. I mean, it's it's soft material. You could tear it and start cutting the bits and pieces off. I actually don't like doing that because I've had to replace these vapor barriers before and they're kind of expensive. So, you know, just cutting them to pieces kind of drives me a little crazy. So there's a bead of butyl or butyl tape, that kind of gummy tar-like substance back behind it. So what I'll normally do is I'll get a little bit of a gap and then very carefully cut at it to get behind it, okay? Now this will tear very, very easily. The, the, the vapor barrier will tear. So I am just super careful about this. And you can see it now, I've got a little bit of a gap there. Now if, now if I just take this and just pull, the vapor barrier will tear before the butyl tape wear does. So what I will do is I'll just walk along this, this outside edge, just applying a little bit of outside pressure you know, to, to help gap the butyl tape. And we'll just work my way around and just cut away at that bead that's now exposed as I pull this away. I'll usually save these vapor barriers. Um, I'm not gonna reuse them, obviously, but you never know, right? You never know, it, it, and plus these are expensive enough that you know I don't see any point in just, just throwing them away. But as you can see, you can see as I start to cut this away. So you're gonna wanna go all the way around and cut this whole thing out. What you, uh, but what I would actually do first, like I mentioned a second ago, measure, so length and width, so, or width and height, <laughs> and just hang a sheet up here, find, it, find your measurements, cut a sheet of the SoundSkins Pro, lay it up here, and then just take a pencil and rough mark out some of these spaces, because that's where, what we're going to fill in. So we're gonna take the vapor barrier off, measure, rough cut our measure of our sheet that's gonna go up here. But then once this is off, I'm gonna show you how to get back behind here and we're gonna be laying the inside of the door skin with the Sound Skins Classic, which is the Sound Skins with the metal back and it's much more weather resistant. All right, so go ahead and get caught up by taking this off. Okay, so I, cut, I measured about 28 inches by about 21 inches. So I cut just a matching square piece and you just hold it up here. Hold it up roughly, take a pencil, start to cut out. So, you know, just mark out some of the areas that you can't cover. So for example, this, this swing back portion right here, you wanna stay away from your door pull and your door lock. So I've just cut out a little bit there. Down here along the bottom, there's just a little bit of a curve. Make sure that you don't cover up any holes like, like for the grip, for the grip screw right there. And also across the bottom. But that's pretty much all good and done. So, and also keep in mind, since you're gonna be doing the other door, which is gonna be the same proportion, so go ahead and cut two 28 by 21 pieces. Now, I'm gonna set this aside, aside for now, <clears throat> and we're gonna finish cutting off the vapor barrier. And like I said, I'm gonna do it very, very carefully. We're gonna get through this. But when we put in the, the SoundSkins Classic, we're gonna be putting it in in strips. But I'll show you what that looks like once we get there. All right, you can see the uh, vapor barrier is off, which is great. So it comes off really nicely. Um, I always leave the bead of butyl tape behind because that's just gonna help the, the sound skin stick down even more. So here's where we get into a little bit more of an art than a science. As you reach back in here, you can see, you know, all the armature for your window. You can see the strut brace that goes across and reinforces your door and how you have to work in all of the space. So what I will normally do is I will take about a four to six inch strip 
of the Soundskins Classic. So this has the adhesive, uh, but it's kind of the cupboard, adhesive on the back and the metal on the front. Because what you're gonna wanna do is take a tape measure and go up as high as you can and then measure down. Sometimes you can get behind this support, this, this support bar, sometimes you can't. This is filled in with foam, so you're not going to be able to. So you're just gonna be taking strips of the, of the Soundskin Spro and slide it in as far as you can and line it down the door. So you're gonna want to measure, I've got this piece and it's probably gonna be, I'll do a rough cut here with one hand. You know, so we'll put it up as high as I possibly can. And you can see it would come down and it would hit the support bar right there. So I'd cut it off, you know, about there or so. And then I'd very carefully slide this up into place. And I'm gonna want to cover the entire inner skin as much as I can, you know, down here below, all the way down to where it hits the seals down here, all the way up through the skins up above. And you can just, you tell why sound just comes straight through that door, right? There's no insulation in the door itself. So this is just a matter of just being patient, cutting strips and fitting them into place. I'll show you what that looks like, but it's just gonna be a repeat of what I just showed you again and again. I'm also gonna do the same thing for this lower section, just fit smaller strips in and just fill and fill and fill and fill all the way across the entire length of the door until that entire skin, inner skin is covered with the Sound Skins Classic. All right, so let me get this first piece into place and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so I did a little bit of the lower section just so you can see what it looks like and it's easier to see. I have that first initial strip all the way back here, which is kind of hard to see right at the moment, right? Right there. So this is where you just cut a strip, fit it in like this lower section. I kind of cut it about a 20 degree angle, you know, measure, measure the strip down, fit it up in, you know, measure it down to, to find the right length, cut, custom cut to the right length, fit it in, peel the backing off, fit it in, and then just slide it down. Then make sure to always use a roller on all of it. Make sure that all of this is stuck down really nicely because uh, it will stay down without any problems and sticks very, very well, especially on metal. Um, but you wouldn't want any air gaps or bubbles, kind of defeats the purpose, and then you don't want it peeling off potentially either. So just keep cut custom fitting and fitting. This is where a good pair of uh, like a good like shop scissors or something similar is gonna be handy as you just go through. Like I said, cut in about four to six inch, six inch strips and then just slowly fill all this in. Now I'll show you what this looks like when I fill in a little bit more of the door, but that's really all it is. This isn't hard, it's just meticulous and takes some time. All right, so I've got the door about half done. So forgive any strobing off my LED light. So here's a little bit of strobe as we look at this. So you can see the strips that I'm slowly working my way across the skin of the door. And this is where you're gonna end up with scrap as you go. You know, if you cut about a four inch strip out of the entire roll, you're gonna cut that strip down, you know, to get it to fit into this place. So I took this piece right here, fitted it all the way up to the top. And then, you know, if I had any excess, I, I trimmed it off the bottom. So then you're gonna end up with these smaller and smaller pieces as you go, but that works out perfectly because those are gonna help fit in into the lower sections and in these upper sections. What I'll usually do with the backing still on, I'll dry fit it, right? So I'll take it, and if I can do this one-handed, I fit it all the way up to the top, see if it fits all the way in, make sure that, it, that it'll flush down really well, just like that. And yeah, see, that's, that piece is about the right, right height for this section. So now that I know that that fits, um, I'll take it back out, I'll peel the backing off and then just adhere it into place. And actually it's gonna stay into place right now really nicely. So as you can see, but just continue to work your way across the door. Always make sure to use your roller as you go through it all to get this to stick down really, really well. It really is that simple. This isn't hard, it's just a matter of just patience and time to work your way across the door. Okay, so I'm gonna finish up this inner lining now, one, one quick note. Like I said, this really is car agnostic because when you pull the door cards off, cards off cars, they all have very similar structure on the inside of the door. So the other thing is if you do have, say, like a 21 or 22 or 23 model that has the new plastic, it doesn't have the foam vapor barrier, it has the plastic, you could still do this. All you do is there, there are a series of little twist locks and you pull that, that hard plastic cover off and you can line the inside of the door with the Soundskins Classic. So this would work really for just about anybody in any scenario. It's just in this case with the foam vapor barrier, I can double layer it, okay? So I'm gonna finish the inside of the door, I'll show you what that looks like, and then we're going to put the new outer skin on, the new vapor barrier with, with the uh, Soundskins Pro. All right, y'all, as you can see, it's all done. Now, I do my absolute best to get all of the seams to touch. 
So it's one contiguous sheet all the way across. Though if you do end up with a, a little teeny tiny gap, and I've got one way up in this corner back here that's about the size of a postage stamp, that's not a big deal. You can't see it, you can only feel it when you lay the sheet in. But I've laid all the strips in and it's one contiguous block. So this is gonna make a huge difference in, in sound quality and in road noise coming through the door. And then we're gonna put the Vapor Barrier Pro here, that skin to replace the uh, Vapor Barrier here in just a second. But I wanted to make sure you saw what this looks like. Now this is gonna add maybe a pound or two of weight to the doors. Your doors will feel a little bit heavier when you put these in. But I also find that the concerns about weight and adding sound skins to just not be something that, that even crosses my mind. Candidly, unless you have a dedicated race car and you are literally worried about cutting ounces of weight off your car, that's not something to worry about. I mean, I always wonder, do, do people that worried about weight not put in a full tank of gas? <laughs> you know, think how much, you know, five gallons of gas weighs, right? So, all right, so this is all done. I can't wait to get this done. So now I'm going to, uh, take the SoundSkins Pro and I'm gonna lay it up here. I'm gonna peel a corner back. And this is also another place where I lay it up in a big sheet. Now remember how we marked it out earlier? So I'm gonna peel back like this upper corner and tack it into place. And then I can take a pair of scissors and just actively cut it as we go around to make it to fit all of this space. It's a lot easier to put it up here and half hang it and get it to actually sit in place and cut it in place. Now, one last thing. Um, obviously from my stage one, I've got my sound rings on here. If you did want to peel these off and, and, you know, lay the sound skins all the way down and then put these back on in place, you could if you wanted to. But in this case, I'm just going to cut right up to the edge and it'll, it'll be fine. I'm also going to make sure to loop around this side, get it around and over and under any cabling, but you'll see as I go. So let me get it hung up and you'll see what that looks like. All right, so I peeled back the backing enough to get it to stick along this top row and hold itself into place really nicely. And hopefully you can see some of my pencil marks um, along the bottom where I've kind of made a rough sketch to round it off around all the existing uh, paneling. Now remember, you don't wanna go too far because if, if I went all the way into here, you can see where my line is here to cut, it, to cut it down and where the original curve of the metal is. You can see where the line of where your door card goes, right? So you don't want to you don't want to get into where the door card goes. You want to get up right to the edge. Okay? You also don't want to interfere with your lock right here, so I've kind of come around that and then across the bottom. And it's always fine to have a little too much material, right? Because that way you can get it walk it right up to the edge and then just very carefully cut it back. Like I said earlier, you can potentially take the speaker out entirely and then lay this down and put the speaker over the top. I'm just going to cut around it. Um, and then have this tab that comes up around this side. You can see where it would stick beyond the frame of where it normally goes. So I've got a little bit of a rounded mark there. So I'm just gonna take a pair of scissors and just carefully walk my lines and cut this extra, the excess off and it should fit really nicely in place. Okay, so let me get that all cut off. I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so here you go. The uh, Vapor Barrier has been replaced with the SoundSkins Pro. You can see I've got it cut around the speaker all the way down along the outside edges. I made sure that my screws are still exposed. Now, some of these center mounts, now I did this on purpose. So there's the two screw point points for the center grip. Now, these you can potentially cover because your screw will drive straight through it and it won't be a big deal. So I, I wanted to show you both ways, especially here in the center section. I, I do like to cover those so it stays as sealed as possible. So one I have uncovered and one I have covered. So when I put the door card back on, the screw will go straight through this, the sound skins and not be a problem. Okay. Now this is tougher material than your vapor barrier material, but if you press on this really hard and somewhere the gaps are, you can press through it. So just be careful when you do it. And then roll out really thoroughly. Now I really suggest having a uh, sharp pair of scissors or a sharp, you know, uh, shop, you know, shop knife. Uh, my scissors are a little ragged, which is why a couple of my, uh, a couple of my cuts are not quite as clean as I would like them, but I cut around the door lock assembly, around my screw holes, around the speaker, and you can see it sealed down really well. So I rolled it out completely. So anywhere that there was a hard surface for it to roll against, I rolled very thoroughly to make sure that it stuck down very well. And this is, like I said, it's gonna stick down even better than the vapor barrier did, which had that single track of that butyl tape. So this is going to be a superior vapor barrier than what you had. And then if for whatever reason you have a damaged vapor barrier, this is a great way to replace it. So not only is it maintenance if you have a damaged vapor barrier, but it's an upgrade. So 
all done as you can tell. So I'm gonna go, go ahead and put the door card back on. Uh, I'll show you taking off that one of the passenger side doors. And then it's just gonna be a repeat on all the rest. But let me show you the passenger side door because it will be slightly different with a little bit less cabling. All right, so really quickly, rehanging the door card here. Uh, so make sure to plug everything back in. You plug the switch back in, rock the little collar. You've got that center plug here. You've got your plug for your fiber optics up here. Hanging the door card is easy. Just hang this top edge and just press it into place and the clips will hold it. And then you can very gently bang it with your hand to bang those plastic posts back in. Now, if you have a plastic po broken plastic post, this is a chance to uh, replace them. Uh, if you've never had your door cards off before, then you probably don't have any broken ones, but you never know. Make sure that your door pull works, right? Uh, before you put it back. Also make sure that your door pin is up through the door card. Okay, so go ahead and smack it all back into place, put those four screws back in, put the cover on, and then we're gonna bump back to the passenger side door. So here on the back door, it's gonna be the exact same thing as the front door. There's gonna be a little bit of less wiring on the inside. On the bottom, there's only one screw here in the bottom. You wanna pull the cover and pull both of these T20s, so one, two, and three. Uh, again, again, crack the bottom uh, post open by getting your plastic trim tool in, and then pop that clip. So, you hear that pop? I wanted you guys to hear that. That's what it sounds like as those plastic rivets let go. Now, I'm not gonna be able to take this all off one-handed, but I can certainly pop these rivets as we go. So you can see, that one's fighting me a little bit. It's gonna take two hands, that's fine. <laughs> but, so you go ahead and just pop all the rivets off and then very carefully separate, you know, pull it off that track across the top, unplug your Bowden cable, unplug your wiring harness and your speaker in this case. Go ahead and pull it all off and then we're going to start all over again. All right, so now that the door card is off, as you can see, we're gonna go through the exact same process. So I'm gonna go through it a little bit faster. You can tell that the vapor barrier on the back doors is a little bit smaller, a little bit more odd shaped, but you do the same thing again. Just measure the entire distance, measure it square, and then we're gonna cut it down. So uh, measure first for you get a big square of the SoundSkins Pro that we're gonna use to replace the vapor barrier. Then go ahead and use your shop knife again and just very carefully cut away the vapor barrier get inside, start laying in strips of, of the classic against the door skin, and then replace the vapor barrier with the Pro. Now, I'll show you a couple of small steps along the way, but it's, since it's the exact same process, I'm gonna do it kind of more in summary than in detail, because you guys definitely get the idea. Okay, but you should be kind of becoming a pro at this at this point. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's get the vapor barrier off. All right, so as you can see, the uh, SoundSkins Classic here on the back door is completely done. This is where you wanna keep your bigger pieces of scrap because you never know what, you know, you can cut it down to exactly what you need to fit it all in. So it looks really, really good. Uh, so that's completely done. So now we just need to use our existing big sheet of uh, SoundSkins Pro like we did before. We're gonna tack it up here. And then we're going to use the pencil to make sure that we cut around the shapes. We show our basic shapes and then we'll use a pair of scissors just to cut that out and then uh, this back door will be done. So once that's done, obviously put your door card back on, um, but then it's just rinse and repeat on the other two doors. So I, I won't take you to do that because you should be pretty much a pro at this at this point. Um, so go ahead and get this door done, go ahead and do the other two, and then wrap up. All right, so as you can see, the rear door is now complete with that whole process lined with the classic on the inside and the pro replacing the vapor barrier. And this is just going to be rinse and repeat on the other two doors if you haven't done them already. So a couple of things here really quick, I just wanted to point out some tips and tricks uh, before we move on. One, if you have a cable run that you feel is getting pinned down by the new sound matting, right? So the sound matting, you, you want to extend past where the vapor barrier went. So what you can do is you can very carefully put a split in the, sound, in the sound skins, pull the cable through and then lay the fingers of that split back down and it'll seal really nicely around the cable. So I've done that in both of these occasions, one for the speaker run and two for the door card wiring harness. Now, I did find that I cut back a little too aggressively on one side when I was trimming this piece and I, and I cut back a little extra. Now the good news is, is I'm still within the boundary of where the uh, previous vapor barrier is, so I don't have to worry about anything like that, but I do just want to be thorough. I'm kind of a I really want to pay attention that way. So don't hesitate to cut a little bit of scrap. You're gonna have scrap left over and just patch in. And I had to do that in two places where I just got a little too aggressive in my measuring and cut back a little bit too far. Now, I did also want to show a couple of things. So here are the, where the holes for those plastic expanding rivets where your door cards will go. And you can see where, where they go. In a couple occasions, I have them covered, like right down here. Now, what you may want to do 
Sometimes the plastic rivets will push through this material just fine without any problem at all. But if you're struggling with that, go ahead and just put a small guide hole in, in the material to begin with. So when that rivet goes in, it'll push through cleanly and lock in nice and tight. So I have a couple of exposed, I have a couple covered, and I punched a hole, a very small hole in that one, just so that rivet could go in without any problems. Okay, so all in all, this side is done. You can see I cut back a little bit further and again, extended beyond where the uh, vapor barrier goes because we can. But I went walked right up to the edge. You can see where the door card goes here from the lines because I don't want to start to get in where, where the door card is going to hit the material. I want the door card to be able to sit by itself. All right, so with that said, um, all, you know, all of the doors are done, the front doors are done, back doors are done. If you haven't done the other two, go ahead and go and do those, but it's gonna be the exact same process. Now, hopefully you followed my stage one as well, and potentially you could do stage one and stage two at the same time, because you're pulling your door cards and you could line it with the wavy foam material. So when we finally get this all done, this isn't gonna be a double layer, it's going to be a triple layer. SoundSense Classic on the inside, Pro here, and the new wavy foam on the inside of the door card. So your doors are about going to be as quiet as really technology will allow. <laughs> all right, so if this is your last door, go ahead and clean up and put your tools away. You're all done. If not, go ahead and duplicate on the other doors and wrap up. All right, y'all, so go ahead and clean up and put your tools away. And you can tell this is not a hard project and really takes only just a few simple tools and some patience and some time. I really appreciate SoundSkins for making such a fantastic product to work with, and it really does make a dramatic difference. Now, especially in this combination of stage one and stage two, you are triple baffled through the doors, which is gonna make a massive difference in your car. This is gonna reduce road noise. This is gonna improve the sound floor for your stereo system, whether it's upgraded or not. And I don't see any reason not to do this stage one and stage two at the same time considering your door cards are going to be off. So make sure to check out the stage one video if you haven't seen that. In addition, if you want to go one step further, make sure to check out my stage three video where we do use SoundSkins Pro through the entire bowl of the entire car for that last ultimate piece to completely reduce road noise in your car. I really appreciate you watching. Please make sure to click like and subscribe. It makes a huge difference to my channel and I would sincerely appreciate it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on my next project.